Good morning. It's Wednesday, that infamous hump day. Another warm day, they tell us, but fall weather is coming soon. I hope. Today, I'm going to read just a little bit from Ephesians. See if it provokes some thought for us today. It says, God, uh, let's see, let me start before that. Go right up here. Although I'm the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages. God, who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. It just seems to me that that's odd. I uh, may not have ever noticed that in there before where he says, the, so, so that... <coughs> Through the church, the wisdom of God in the rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So where are the heavenly places? And why would it be up to the church to let anyone in the heavenly places know anything? Or maybe it's that the people, the, the rulers and authorities in heavenly places should be able to see the church representing the kingdom of God in the community. I wonder what it would mean for the church to really do that. Um, or are we doing it? Uh, are we doing a fair job of it? Are we doing a good job of it? Are we uh, failing miserably? It seems to me that, that when you use words that we talk about in church or when you watch, you know, old Westerns, you understand the church is, a, 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 you know, we have most of us call our big room in the church a sanctuary. And, and what should that mean? I mean, sanctuary in the, in the sense of what we see in, in like in the movies is a place where you can go and be safe. What, what worries me is I'm afraid people don't go to church to feel safe. Even in this current political war that we're having, I don't think people feel safe. I don't think we intentionally create a toxic environment, but I think there's one there. I think people go in and they uh, might just innocently want to have an opinion about something and they are lambasted. And I'm not just talking about politics. I'm talking about anything. They might have an opinion about anything. Years ago, I was a part of a situation in the church where a person came to the church to get help, to get support, to get direction, so that they could then turn themselves in to the authorities for a crime they had committed. But there were people in that church at that time that were mad because the church helped. We didn't aid and abet the criminal. We supported the person. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom of God is supporting, encouraging, strengthening, loving. It seems to me that the easiest place to find the kingdom of God 
on this planet ought to be in the church. It seems to me that the church should and could and ought to be a place where love, mercy, and grace abound. And yet every time we pray the prayers in the great thanksgiving related to our uh, celebration of the Lord's table, we pray for forgiveness as a church where we have failed to love our neighbor. So what we know is that we, we have failed. And I think that's a good thing that we know it because it seems to me that the first thing you have to do to change your behavior is to understand how you have failed. And once we know that, then we can look and we can understand some of these things the writer of Ephesians says when, when the writer talks about the mystery, the understanding of the mystery of Christ. It says here, this is earlier than what I read a while ago, in former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed in his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and share in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now, you know, in the sense of, of Gentiles, um, that's non-Jews, but you could, in today's modern times, you could almost look at that as, as Gentiles is the, the, the common person, and they have as much right to the love, mercy, and grace of Jesus Christ as the religious folk. Isn't that what the, the stories in the Gospels are about? The Pharisees and the others. I read things like this and it stirs my thinking about how the church has and should and will uh, set an example during the recovery from the pandemic. Should we continue to be overcautious? Should we assure that we're not the cause of someone's sickness? Absolutely. I have caught more flack as a pastor for the cautions, you know, the social distancing, no handshaking, uh, all that stuff. And yes, we are more lax about it today than we were in March, and that may be a problem. But once again, it's about awareness. See, the rules of no shaking hands if everybody that shook hands would then go sanitize their hands, if they do it before and after, we probably wouldn't spread any illnesses. If everybody would realize that they are a factory for germs and maybe a factory for uh, the virus, and their goal was not, we're not setting out in the world to not catch it, we're trying not to spread it. If everybody would work together, and certainly the church should be setting the first and foremost example. And I know what I'll hear as well, those churches, their parking lots are full. I can't do anything about that. The responsibility we have in the kingdom is for the place in it where we are found. And we're found in this place at this time. The church should reveal the Spirit of Christ. Well, the last word I'll say about that is, without us, there is no church. And so we should start, we should be the, the beginning. Every person that comes into the church should be a living temple of the Spirit of God 
together we become a stronger force in the Spirit of God and we work in unity to lift up the power, the name, and a relationship with Jesus Christ in the world. Well, those are my thoughts today. I'm not sure there's a conclusion, but there's work to do. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us. Strengthen us. Lead us. Through the power and the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, I hope you have an absolutely great hump day.